What's going on y'all? It's Gum Gum TCG here back again with another video. Today we have another episode of Deep Dive. I really hope y'all are enjoying this series. I'm going to continue to do it every time a new set releases or a new leader releases so we can get to talking about them and how they can work with the cards that go well with them and try to make some cool deck lists to see if they are viable at all. So before we get into things, I do want to say all my homies hate red decks. We're looking at a red deck today and even though it's not a an amazing leader, I still hate it. And if you hate red decks as much as I do, definitely be be sure to go check out my merch in the description below we have all my homies hate red decks hats and shirts down there for sale so please be sure to check those out if you hate red decks also i want to shout out dueling guard if you haven't heard of dueling guard they are the most amazing tcg anime inspired accessories you will ever find they have binders deck boxes and playmats to meet all your tcg needs and all I gotta say is their designs are amazing, and I use them every single time I play cards. If you haven't checked them out before, make sure to go check them out. I'll leave a link to their site in the description below with code GUMGUMTCG you can use for a discount at checkout. What? You haven't heard of Dueling Guard? Dueling Guard is the best TCG accessory company on the market. They have high quality deck boxes, binders, and playmats made for people who enjoy playing and collecting trading card games in style. They have tons of designs based off of fan favorite anime such as One Piece, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, and many more. They hit the ground running earlier this year making high quality TCG accessories with beautiful designs that have sold out many times, so if you haven't picked up any of their products, make sure to do so before they sell out again. I have a few deck boxes and playmats from them already and can attest to how they don't cut any corners when it comes to quality, performance, and design. I highly recommend their products and use them every time I play cards. Be sure to check the description below for a link to their site and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. All right, y'all, without further ado, this is the VV leader. We're gonna take a look at the leader real quick and then we're gonna go through a lot of these cards really fast because a lot of them are older cards from past sets. So we don't really need to talk about them too much, but. I am going to take a second to talk about some of the other cards that are newer, like the Alabasta cards that can go with this, and really try to figure out some synergy with this. And then I'm going to show you three deck lists. I'm going to show you one that won some uh, tournament in Japan, and then I'm going to show you two more. One's going to be a Straw Hat Alabasta list, and then one's going to be a Crazy Concoction. I don't really know what to call it, but we'll look at it together. So first off, this leader is blue and red that is a color combo we have not seen yet in this game and i think it's interesting however i don't believe there's too much synergy there it has 5,000 power five life uh alabasta kingdom typing and it says this leader cannot attack we are seeing a new trend of leaders with really strong effects that cannot attack such as iceberg rebecca vv things like that and the effect is really cool however i think it sounds cooler than it actually is Activate main once per turn. You can pay two dawn, draw a card, and up to one of your characters gains rush during this turn. So you don't have to give your character rush. You can pay the two dawn and just get the draw. However, giving one of your characters rush could be really impactful in a certain game state. It could close out a game really easy, and it can make some cards that are decent become really great. However, it does limit what cards you can make have rush you know they have to have eight or less cost because you do have to pay that two and you'd have to be at 10 dawn for that to work so i think you're not going to be using this leader effect to give rush every single time but you are going to be using it to get that draw a lot because that's going to generate you a lot of advantage and a lot of hand size in this deck so let's go ahead and look at some really good red cards first off we got otama 2k counter that's been in almost every single red deck since the game started just insanely strong gives minus two to hit to gives minus 2k power to opponent's character for the turn and that pairs really nicely with some of the alabaster cards so this is a definitely a really solid option for this deck and this we've got sanji just a good searchable 2k uh you can make it really big and then you can also give it rush for 7k with rush i think that's really strong you have nami you can search all your straw hat crew cards and a lot of the alabasta cards are also straw hat crew cards so pairs really well there we got Nico Robin. I think this goes really well with, like I said, some of the Alabaster card effects because they like to minus power and KO things based on power. So another option is Nico Robin, especially good because it's searchable off of Nami. So solid there. 
Uh, we also have the Brook from OPO1, which I think is overlooked a lot because it's very strong. It gives two characters minus 2k power when it attacks with the Dawn under it. So I think this is another really solid option that should be explored. Then we have the Rush Zoro. Of course, we're talking about a Rush deck. We have to bring him up. Really strong card. Don't even have to use the leader effect to give him Rush. So solid option for any red deck. Next, we got Edward Newgate. This card is limited in the TCG. However, it's always a solid option in red decks. Just something to talk about. You could always build a Whitebeard Pirates version of this deck. And I believe there is a list that is Whitebeard Pirates heavy that topped in Japan. Uh, unfortunately, only one of two lists, and it's not the list that we're going to be looking at. But uh, definitely a strong option. The Whitebeard Pirate cards are really strong. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of them queued up here to talk about. King Do, 5 cost, 7k, Whitebeard Pirate, so it's searchable and just a solid option you could give rush uh, same with thatch big body could give it rush searchable visa is really strong because it's popping something with 3k or less and with some of these other cards like chaka and otama you can really capitalize on vista's popping power so definitely a solid option there same with ace i saw this in the whitebeard pirates list and it does not gain rush. However, it does give 3k to two. It gives minus 3k to two characters your opponent controls that turn. So you could do that. And then theoretically, you could give it rush yourself. So really solid option there as well. Uh, of course, we got Blocker Marco limited to one, but insanely powerful card. Got to mention it. Little Ors Jr., just another vanilla option that you could give Rush. I don't know why this card's art is so low res, but that's pretty damn funny to me. Got Ezo, of course, got to bring it up when talking about Whitebeard cards because it is a good searcher. Same with Buggy. Buggy searches any event that is red in the game, so why not play it if you can? You know, you get access to Fire Fist, and then you can search other strong events and then use that Fire Fist when you pair it with other cards at minus cost, like this Brook and some of the Alabasta cards. Could be really strong. Same with Blumenko. Just a small beater that minuses power on your opponent's characters, so wanted to throw it in there. Same with Teach. Teach is a really strong card and it can get really big, especially for four Dawn, using two to make it uh, have Rush and then giving it an extra thousand power and an extra draw. That's two draws with a 7k body with Rush for six Dawn. Pretty strong, but you do have to KO a character. So not great, but I do think it has potential. Next, we got Pop Marco. You know, it pops at three or uh, 3,000 power or less when played and on KO, trash an event to bring it back. Really solid for Wipe Your Pirates build. Here we go. We're going to look at some of the Alabasta cards. Now, this is Igorom, two cost, 3k power, 1,000 counter. And it says main, you can rest this character and give your active leader minus 5,000 power for the turn. Doesn't matter because our leader can't attack. And it looks at the top five of your deck, reveals an Alabasta Kingdom type card, adds it to your hand, and places the rest on the bottom in any order. So it's just your searcher for the Alabasta archetype. Really solid option if you're going to play some Alabasta cards. Next, we got Usopp, four drop, 5k, thousand counter. On KO, it KOs up to one of your opponent's characters with an original power of 5,000 or less. It's all right, but I guess if you paired it with something like Teach, you could pop something and then also get your big attack so that could be kind of cool i don't know i don't think this card's amazing don't see it making it into a deck list honestly but always want to talk about it same with karu uh one cost two thousand power thousand counter activate main rest this character give one rested dawn card to each of your alabasta type characters i think the effect is really strong but it is restricted to all those alabasta characters and a lot of them are not the strongest so kind of mid Next, we got Kung Fu Dugong, uh, just a one drop 1k kind of blocker. You have to have another Kung Fu Dugong in play to give it blocker, but then you have two blockers on the field. So it's interesting, but I think they're just better options like Chopper Blocker. That's a blocker just by itself without having to have another copy on the field. It's funny. It's cute, but there's better. Next, we got Koza. I think this card's really strong. 3 cost, 3k, 2k counter. That's the main reason. 2k counter is really big and it's searchable. When attacking, you can give your active leader 5,000 power this turn. This character has 2,000 power until the next start of your next turn. So he becomes 5k. I think it's decent, especially for that 2k counter. If you have to play it, you can and you can make him have rush. Decent. 
Next, we got Sanji. This is a one drop 3k, 1000 counter. Uh, kind of just like Sunny Coon, but now it's easily accessible and not locked behind a little uh, participation deck. So, cool card. Easy to give it rush, but kind of low attack power. Here we have Chaka. I think Chaka is a big part of this deck and is going to make its way into almost every single deck list for a VV just because of its power. It's 3k, 5, it's 3 costs 5k, Dawn times 1 when attacking. If your leader is VV, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 3,000 power for the turn, then KO up to one of your opponent's characters with zero power or less. So really strong, especially when you pair it with cards like Otama or other cards at minus cost. I think this could be really strong, especially if you pair it with Brook. You could attack with Brook, give two things minus 2k, attack with Chaka, give something minus 3k, then pop it, potentially getting rid of a 5k power character. So very solid option and searchable. Next, we got the Super Spot Build Duck Squad. Uh, nice 2k counter, 2 cost 3k, when attacking give your leader minus 5k, and return this to your hand at the end of your turn. I think it's okay, I wouldn't play it, I'd just play it for the 2k if anything. Next we got Tony Tony Chopper, 3 cost 4k, 1000 counter, on play, plays an animal type character card with 3000 power or less from your hand. Eh, seen better cards, I don't think this is really super playable unless you're playing a bunch of these animals and I don't think you would want to play a bunch of those animals unless you're playing a goofy deck list. Next we got Nami, 2 cost 3k, 1000 counter. When attacking, you reveal a card from the top of your deck and if that card was a character with 6k power or more, this character gains 3k power during this turn, then you put that card at the bottom. I think this card's really power and counterintuitive. You know, if you stack your deck, put a big high cost character with a lot of power at the top, just to get this Nami effect off, you're also getting rid of that character. So kind of feels bad, but I don't know, maybe it has a home in a certain deck list. Next, we got the Nefertari Cobra, two cost, zero power, thousand counter. Your turn, all your, Abast all your Alabasta type characters other than this one gains a thousand power. Uh, I think that could be really strong, especially if he stays on the field. Uh, just kind of a blanket buff, and those have been proven to be strong with the Zoro leader. So yeah, good option, I guess. Next, we got Pell, another really solid card for the Alabasta typing. We got five cost, 6K. Dawn times one when attacking. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 4,000 or less power. So when you pair it with Chaka, you could potentially use Chaka to pop something with uh, 3,000 power and then attack with Pell and KO something with 4,000 power. So pretty good, honestly. It could become a nasty combo, especially if you pair it with that Brook card or a Tama, you could pop some bigger things. Next, we got Monkey D. Luffy. I think this card's really lackluster, and it could have been a lot better. 8 cost, 9k, has Banish. Uh, yeah, you can give it Rush in this deck, so there's that, but I, I think there's just better options, especially for that Dawn. Same with the Zoro. 5 cost, 6k, 1,000 counter. On play, gives up to one of your opponent's characters minus 2k power during this turn, so... Like I said, when paired with some of these other cards, it could be really strong, but I think there's better options. Next, we've got the Nefertari VV character card, seven cost 4K, thousand counter. All of your red characters with a cost of three or more other than this character gain rush. This card's really strong, but I think that it's just cost, it's cause for instant removal. You know, you play this on the field and your opponent's gonna deal with it next turn, so. Giving everything rush while this is on the field, if you can protect it or it doesn't get removed, is actually really insane. But, like I said, it's honestly probably just going to get removed instantly. So, uh, cool card, but needs some protection. Next, we got Monkey D. Luffy promo. Uh, gives rush if it has two Dawn under it. Thought it was a cool option, but you could just give it rush itself. So, wanted to throw it in here. Gordon, I think, is a great option because it gives that minus power. You know, when paired with Chaka and Pell, this could be really strong. Put Uta in here just because it's like Nico Robin 2, but it has a 2K, so uh, just sticking with that theme of popping cards with a certain power level. Uh, definitely wanted to talk about him at least. Then we have Monkey D. Luffy, 4 drop 6K vanilla. Easily could give it rush and then hit for 6 or 7K. Really nice option. We got Karu, one drop 3k. It's kind of just Sanji as Karu though, and it's not Straw Hat Crew, but wanted to throw it in here. Next we have Sanji from the ST01, two drop 4k, could gain rush, pretty good. 
uh, I think Jinbei is actually a really solid option in this deck because you could easily give it Rush and then it has 5k attack and when attacking your leader or character gains and then when attacking your leader or up to one of your characters other than this one gains a thousand power during this turn i think that can be really strong when paired with the right cards and i, I think this is kind of slept on honestly next we got our chopper next we got our one cost chopper blocker no one love them uh we got the dawn attached nami i think this is a solid option to get maximum dawn usage out of this deck you know if you're using that ability to draw and give rush then you can also use those dawn i think it's cool uh, we got the two cost 4k VV, just another option to give Rush, I guess, you know, just love these vanillas. Got to throw the two cost 2k Brook in here, you know, getting that Dawn usage and also a good searchable 2k. Also always have to talk about Rush Luffy when we're talking about red decks because this card's absolutely broken. So uh, another one I think that people don't talk about enough is the Zoro from the STO one really strong card dawn times one gives it a thousand power and that's just continual it's not just your turn so he becomes 7k on your turn and your opponent's turn and you could easily just give him rush throw a dawn on him and then he's 7k for five dawn that's pretty good in my opinion here's a new card this comes out of the ultimate decks and i just wanted to throw it in here because it's insanely broken and we'll see it play in a lot of red decks it's the 10 cost rush luffy just an insanely broken card, so had to bring it up. Now let's look at some blue cards. Uh, some of these are kind of weird options, but I just want to include them because they're cool. Uh, like this Gecko Moria. Four cost, 5k, thousand counter. Your turn, if you have five or more cards in your hand, this character gains double attack. So you will definitely have a lot of cards in your hand in this deck because you're constantly using that effect to draw and give rush. Uh, like I said, you don't have to give rush, but you're always drawing and you could do a lot of searching in this deck. So if you have big hand size, you could play this card easily when you're at maybe eight dawn and then put two on it, making it 7k. Use two to give it rush. And then you have a 7k with rush and double attack kind of cool next we got mihawk got to talk about him blue card staple at this point this card's gone through the roof because of croc decks and queen so got to throw it in here great removal option next we have dofi blocker i think that this is really strong too just because you could stack your deck and set up for those draws it's really powerful in other decks that do stuff like that like ivankov so always want to bring him up and same for perona just kind of the same concept except dofi's a blocker Stacking the deck to get a good draw or set up for later turns is always strong. And that's one thing that blue gives uh, an edge over other decks. All right. And then next we have the Pacifista blocker. So I put this in here because I want to pair it with the Centamaru as well as the vanilla Pacifista. And we'll talk about those here more in a minute. But solid option you can bring out of the deck for a free blocker at any time when you have Centamaru on the field. So really strong option. And then we already talked about Perona a little bit. Let's look at Boa Hancock. This is a great option because it's cheap. And it has good power behind it. It's got a counter. It's a blocker. And then Dawn Times 1, when you attack or block, you draw a card if there's five or less in your hand. So if you pair this with your VV effect, you can, you can get two draws in one turn and an attack out of it if you do it right. So definitely a solid option. I think this Monkey D. Luffy blue character is also a great option it's searchable it has good power and then you can also bounce a card and gain double attack so if you pair that with brush and the rest of your dawn you can have a really big beefy double attacker on your field next we got kaya just a great 2k counter for any blue deck always want a player just to get some hand cycling and that good 2k same with soja king solid option seven cost 6k you know, I think that there's some better options, but it, it's really good removal and hand cycling. So definitely want to talk about it as well as 10 drop blue Kaido. This card's great removal, big body that's hard to get rid of. I think that it's really strong against almost every deck that isn't blue or has access to red rock. Uh, King, solid option two, draws you a card. And then if you give it rush, you get another card. So same with left Boa, kind of the same concept, but a bigger body that can also get you a card. Next, we got Ice Oni, and this pairs with the Playgrounds. And if you don't know what these do, they're kind of some really good instant removal. And when you pair with the VV effect, you can actually pull this off and get some good removal in the same turn, almost like a Fire Fist, but with blue cards. So 
Next, we got Sasaki, another solid 2K for the blue color. Next, we got Sasaki, another solid blue 2K. You know, you get to shuffle your hand back if it's really bad, and it's also a 2K. Next, we got Law from the Tournament Pack 1, and I think that this card still has not found the right home, and I think this deck could be it, honestly. On play, if your opponent has six or more cards in their hand, they add one of your opponent's life cards to their hand, so this could be really strong against some red decks, and then you could easily give it Rush and draw a card. Really strong. Next is Sintamaru. Like I said, this card's always been really strong in my opinion. It's one of the only cards in the game that summons from the deck and can do it like instantly. So it could be really strong to use this to bring out a vanilla 6k beater and then give that rush and draw a card. You're getting so much value out of this card and your leader at the same time. Really strong option. And we're going to look at a list that uses this. Next, we got Doe Flamingo from the Structured Deck. Solid removal option that you could give Rush. Has 7k. Just a good card. Next, we got that Pacifista like I was talking about. You bring it off of Sentamaru. And it does have that 1k in case it breaks up your hand. Then we have the Boa Hancock Blocker Trigger. Next, we have the Boa Hancock Trigger Blocker. I think that this is a great option for decks that need to be a little more defensive. You could pull this out of life. And then you have a free insulated blocker hit the next turn. Now we're going to look at some events, and like I said, most of these we're going to go over very fast because they're not new ones. So Red Hawk, solid red event, 4K, pops up for a 4K or less, so always throw it in a deck. Same with Rad Beam, limited to one for a reason. It's going to be in almost every single red deck list you see. Next we have in two years at the Sabaody Archipelago. This is just a great option for a Straw Hat Searcher. You can pair it with Nami and have that double search ability, search all your Straw Hat names. Then we have Fire Fist. Like I said, if you play a build that plays Buggy, you can easily take advantage of this and KO some good cards on the field. And then KO some characters your opponent controls, especially when you pair it with Chaka and some other minusing power cards. You can get some insane value out of this. And then I had Fiery Doll in here, but I always get that card confused with Crossfire. So I took that out if you were wondering about that. Uh, we do have the new Bad Manners Kick Course. It's a new theme of events for zero cost for a... It's a new theme of events that is zero cost that you have to trash a card and your leader or character gains 3k power. So very solid option for red. Uh, also happiness punch, especially because this card works better in the VV deck than any other deck because your leader is almost always going to be active. It's one cost counter, gives an opponent's leader or character minus 2000 power for the turn. Then if your leader's active, you give minus 1000 more. So... In this deck, your leader is going to be active almost all the time, unless you use a couple of these Alabasta cards. So it's kind of like Hell's Judgment for one card in this deck. So pretty good. Next, we have Captivating Dizziness Dance. And this card's like many Hell's Judgment too. It's main. If your leader has the Alabasta type, give up to two of your opponent's characters minus 2k power during this turn. So I guess it's restricted to characters. It's three cost and the trigger activates the main effect. It's just okay. I think it could have been better, but it's solid option when playing the VV deck. Then we have Guard Point. Going to make its way into almost every red deck as well. Just such a strong event card. Same with Jet Pistol. This card's really strong, so I wanted to throw it in here, especially when you're minusing cost of things. This could be really good to help clear the board. Uh, we have Overheat. Really solid option that could also be removal. Another one of those zero-cost events but this one's blue, so you can max out on these potentially. And with those draws you get from VV, the extra card that you have to discard off of this could be essentially free. 3,000 world solid removal. Uh, same with Gum Gum Red Rock. Really strong blue card. One of the strongest blue cards out right now. So uh, definitely good options for any blue deck. And then we have Playgrounds, which pairs with the Ice Oni we talked about earlier, as well as Love Love Beam. This card's also really strong for blue decks. So... That's going to round out all the cards for VV that you could play. I mean, there's all... Uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that. That's going to round out all the options that I think are decent for this deck. You know, there's tons of more other options for red and blue. But I just wanted to talk about these because I think that these could all make a solid deck list. So let's go ahead and get looking at some of the deck lists. Like I said, the first one we're going to look at is a tournament winning deck list from Japan. And here it is. This is the tournament winning deck list from Japan. The only difference is they were playing four Radical Beam 
but because we have it limited here, I threw in three guard point instead. So that is the only difference. And I think if you're wanting to play VV, this is a solid place to start. You know, you have your Straw Hat crew cards and your Nami searcher, so you can search a lot of your deck. And uh, I mean, it gives you access to your Sanjis. It gives you access to your Rad Beams, your Happiness Punch, your Guard Point, your 3000 Worlds, and your Red Rocks. So really solid option to play Nami in this list. Then you have Vista and Chaka, as well as Marco to do some popping and removal. And then you also have your Dofi to stack your draws, your Soja King to get those draws and also removal. Same with the Kaido, big removal, big body. You got another 2K in Sasaki. And then you have your Dofi, which is also good removal. And mind you, you can give almost all these cards a rush. So I think this is a really solid deck list and a really solid starting point if you're wanting to test out BB. Like I said, this is a tournament winning list, just that one minor change for the TCG, but I think that it accomplishes almost the same thing and it's a great place to start if you're wanting to try this deck out. But let's go ahead and get into the next deck list. This is going to be a Alabasta Straw Hat list that I cooked up, so uh, don't give me too much hate for it, but I tried my best. Let's go ahead and look at that now. And here it is, Alabasta Straw Hat type deck list uh yeah you got the otamas you got to max out on those especially when you're pairing them with cards like chaka pell and a couple other ones so i think that it's a great option always good 2k to play in red decks then you have sanji searchable off of nami same with nico robin when you pair it with the otama and the other cards nico robin is just like having another chaka on the field and then you have Igarom to search the rest of your alabasta type cards and then you have Koza for another 2K that you could also play and give it rush, make it have some more power, that kind of thing. Chaka, really good option. Like I said, it's kind of like Nico Robin, but a little bit different. Really solid though. Same with Pell, really strong card. And then I did put that Jinbei in here because I think that it's really strong. You could pair it with your other beaters and give them some boosts and stuff. And especially if you give them rush, then you can instantly give one of these guys a boost like Pell. Then he becomes a 7K. Really strong card. Searchable off of Nami as well. Same with the Rush Luffy. I wanted to include him as well as the Blue Luffy because I think they're both solid options. And when you have that searchability through your deck, you can choose which one you want when you see them off the top of your deck. So Rush Luffy, insanely strong. You don't have to give it Rush and just great card overall. Blue Luffy, if you do give it Rush, it can be really impactful. You know, it, you could discard your whole hand and bounce some two cards and then also get that double attack with Rush. So very strong option. And then I did throw in three copies of the 10 drop Rush Luffy from the ultimate deck in here because I think that it's a great option for this deck. You got to have a big beater somewhere. And this is the one that we're going to use. Searchable, really hard to deal with, really big body, and it has a great effect. And then our event lineup is going to be the one rad beam, four guard points, two happiness punch, one 3000 worlds, and four red rocks, all searchable through Nami. So very strong there and then you can also grab the happiness punch off of Igarom if you really need it so yeah like I said I built this deck list and I was trying to stick really strong to that straw hat list I wanted to play a good amount of 2ks and a good amount of powerful bodies uh, I'm gonna test this list out a little bit and if you test it out and you like it let me know down in the comments below also be sure to like the video and subscribe we're trying to reach 500 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see more content like this make sure to do that we're almost there and I appreciate every single one of you for subscribing and watching my videos now let's go ahead and look at this last deck list that I don't really know what to call I kind of just threw some cards together and I think that it could be interesting I think it needs some refinement but Let's get into that now. All right, y'all, this is going to be that last deck list that I don't really know what to call. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, but I think that it's really cool and has the makings of a cool deck list. I think it needs a little more fine tuning, but after some adjustments, I think that this could be really powerful. We are once again playing the four Otama and the four Nami. Nami can search a couple cards in this deck. It can search all your events except for playgrounds. And then it can search your choppers and your brooks. So definitely wanted to throw her in here. You also have the Chakas. You got to be able to find those in this deck list because it really boosts up your presence on the board. Same with Pell. I wanted to play more, but I couldn't find the room to put another one in here. So if you toy around with this list or something similar, let me know what ratios you're running because I would like to try a list like this out. Uh, we got the four choppers for some blockage and we got the four brook for some more 2K that's searchable. And like I said, this is kind of more of a defensive build that's going to capitalize off of Sintamaru and Chaka to try and put that pressure on your opponent, remove their cards, and then also 
really put that pressure on with the passive pieces and rush. Uh, you're also going to be drawing a lot with your VV effect, so you can really get, generate some good advantage when you're pumping out a free body every turn, drawing a card, and then hitting in with it as well. We got the Dofi blocker to stack the deck so you can get that good draw. And then I am playing that one Pacifista blocker just so that if you need it, you can pump it out with Centamaru. Uh, we also have the three vanilla Centamaru. We also have the three vanilla Pacifistas as our beaters. I didn't want to play four. I feel like four can be clunky, especially when you're playing the fourth copy as the blocker already. So um, I'm sure four would be fine, but I really couldn't find the room to cut anything to make that happen. Then we are playing the three Ice Oni and the three Playgrounds. I was thinking maybe four and four just so we can see them. You know, it is a two card combo. You do have to have both of them for it to resolve. But hopefully with the, all the draws and some of the stacking you get from Dofi, you could maybe see them more. Maybe there's a way to fit a Perona in here so you can have some extra stacking so that you can stack that and make sure you can pull that combo off because being able to bottom deck something, play this for free, give it rush and then bottom deck something else is really powerful in this deck in my opinion then we have the events we got the classic one rad beam but only three guard points i wanted to play four but like i said i feel like this list is already really tight we don't even have a real big body in here like kaido or the big loopy so i really couldn't find room for more we do have three happiness punch i guess i could cut one of these for another guard point but it is what it is the three playgrounds to go with those ice oni and then three red rocks for some good removal like I said, this deck list is kind of experimental and weird. Um, I've heard people experimenting with Ice Oni and Playgrounds before, so I wanted to try it for myself and make something cool. So, I don't know. Could it be better? Probably. But this is what I was able to put together, and I'm going to test it out and see how it does. But if you end up testing this list out, let me know how you feel about it. Or if you're running something similar, let me know how you feel about it. You could always post it in my Discord. If you're not a part of my Discord, make sure to join. We got it down in the description below. We're going to be doing a free box tournament once we hit 100 members. So make sure you get in there before that closes up. And uh, yeah, this has been the deep dive on Vivi. I tried to keep this one concise and short, just like we did with the Esho list. Uh, I think it's a little shorter than the other videos. But this one's still a little long. We had a lot of cards to go through. But I appreciate you so much for watching. If you haven't checked me out on social media, make sure to check me out down below in the description. I also have a link to my Twitch where I stream on Sundays around 7 and my Discord server that you can join. And if you haven't checked out Dueling Guard, definitely make sure to go check them out. I have a link to their website down in the description below as well as code GUMGUMTCG you can use for a discount at checkout. Also, make sure to get your hands on some All My Homies Hate Red Decks hats and shirts. I have those in the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.